Hi everyone. Yes, I made a Kumiko plant stand, and it's as a result of trying a lot of common cool techniques available on YouTube all at a time. I'm just doing my best so one day I can entertain you just by what I make. It will be a long way, so in the meantime, please enjoy watching me messing around. And here's what I got. In this video, I'll try haunch tenons with a mita cut, a breadboard end, creating a round shape, epoxy and bow tie inlay on the live edge, and kagome kumiko. Let's see how I did them. First, I cut out the wood length and width I needed from 1x8 maple by hand tools and plane so hard. But I'll skip this section at this time. Let me tell you one thing. If you want figured wood, check out the Home Depot. They might have it mixed with regular lumbers. I just got a little bit figured maple because it will be too hard for me to plane if it's fully figured. Now I'm working on hound tenons. It's not that different from regular tenons and mortises, but I did a mitre cut on the bottom so I can round off the jointing edges later. The thing is, the small piece was a little bit off the square, and that gave me a hard time marking on them correctly. But I stupidly just kept going for the first one. I don't know. I like handling the female side of the joint. It sounds something R-rated. And here you see the gap. Though it closed better later when I clamped it tight and glued it, I felt the limitation of my 42mm mini planer when it comes to making a square edge. The next is breadboard end joint. I chose to drill the board and roughly cut off the tenon by saw and chisel to shape it. Please don't get me wrong, I have a carded router, but I'm doing it in this way because I enjoy every single step by hand tools. Again, the mortise part wasn't that much hard and I guess it's because I like hand Anyways, I fabricated this to wedge joint later. I really suck at making clean tenons, but it at least fits tight. Moving on to the round shape style, this was what I was most excited about this project. I got the bench dock brand round base box shape. It was kind of difficult to handle at first, and it didn't go smooth. But I found the angle of the blade is so important. So I adjusted the left and right side of the blade to be uneven on purpose. And depending on the angle of where I shave, I use the different part of the blade. I don't know if this is the right way, but it worked well. Then I worked on the live edge. I got this epoxy just because it was on sale. And I asked my wife to grab some pigment on the way back from her work. See, she got the legit transfast pigment. But don't worry, my wife knows better, and she gave me an alternative choice. Anyways, I got the cheap black dye, as it's just to fill the small cracks, and it's time to fill them. The epoxy really didn't want to go in the crack, so I used the heat gun not to eliminate the bubbles, but make it softer. It worked, and the epoxy reached to the other side of the cracks. Well, this cheap black dye obviously looked like a red, but it's okay. And now, I worked on the bow tie inlay. I'm actually not a big fan of it, so I decided to do it on the flip side. First, I used the super glue to place the bow tie on the board and trace it by an exacto knife. Then I used the drill and chisels to clean it. After doing lots of chisel works in the past projects, I didn't feel it was difficult at all. 
Well, only the thing I thought difficult was to cut out bowtie side square. Oh, the faces I put on the side of the bowtie are, they are the target line. When I can hide their faces in the boat, that means the bowtie is completely in. And it fits with almost no gaps. But hey, it's the flip side and who cares. Then I tried Kumiko. This time I went with basic Kagome pattern. How you make the basic Kagome is basically the same as Mitsukude, but the vertical lines go in the middle of the intersection of the crossing lines. I think cutting the Kagome slots is easier than to do it for Mitsukude, but you should do some math here to find the center. For the vertical lines, you just need to flip it and cut the slot right in the middle. But for the crossing lines, here is the way to find the center. The reason I said basic kagome is, there are many variations and they are so complicated. Anyways, I finished cutting it out and it seems like I did a good job. You see how it goes. The thing I realized was, this is way more difficult than Mitsukude. As it has more joint locations than Mitsukude, every slot has to be more precise or it won't fit. Okay, now I do all other simple tenons and mortises, and let me give you my finding. When you do tenons and mortises, of course it's good to be real precise, but if you are a beginner like me, Please focus more on the tenon width that fits grain direction of a mortise, like the picture. If this side is too thick, the mortise side of the wood may split, so it should be accurate. On the other hand, the other side can run a little wider side to make it tight fit. I usually work on this side after the grain direction and shave off just a little by little to fit it tight and right. Finally, I assemble the legs. It's almost there. And trim the top board. I really love this hand saw. And then I put the mineral oil after sanding everything by 400 grit. Then I did a little oil sanding by 600 and 800 grit at the second cut. Now I'm using wax and steel wool to take advantage of this figured maple. It shines like something expensive. After the wax is dried, I tried this method to fix the top. And the screw holes of the middle one have also a little leeway for the wood movement. I have no idea what it's called. And here's the final piece. I'm happy that at least I completed all my missions and I felt accomplished. But, hmm, I didn't feel some kind of excited feeling by the final piece. It's a personal preference, but maybe I included all what I want to practice in this project and the design was just as a result of it. Anyways, it took me 7 days and cost roughly about $50 so it's far from profitable if I sell it. Again, I'm not planning to sell what I make, but it's just criteria for me to think if I'm coming close to those people who sell what they make. But woodworking is fun, so it's all good. Thank you so much for watching. I would be happy if you liked the video and happy if you subscribe to this channel. If you have any suggestion to my video, it's also welcome. See you!